potential for an historic week is in the hands of the CSUMB Monterey Bay women's basketball team. Welcome back to the nation. Alongside the otters, Julie Hirong and London Houchin. I'm John Devine. And there's a lot at stake here over the next 48 hours, isn't there, ladies? There definitely is. Yeah. By the way, you guys are the first ever athletes from CSUMB to appear on this video. I don't know. I thought there'd be some confetti coming down here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for Friday. It's been a magical year for the Otters, who have already shattered a single-season school record for wins. And with two more wins this week, CSUMB will host its first ever California Collegiate Athletic Association banner for basketball. Julie, I got to ask you honestly: Did you see this coming when the season started back in October? Um, I mean, you never, you can't really, you know, see that far ahead. So I'm going to say no. But I definitely knew we had the potential. I knew we had. Um, the depth, you know, the six, seven, eight, nine people that could just come in and we could just, you know, keep rotating and rotating and rotating and just keep taking it on people. But, um, you know, as the season continued to go on, you begin to, you know, see, wow, we really can do this. We can do this. Yeah. And, I mean, from there, it's kind of like you you get to choose your own destiny. Right. And, Lennon, obviously there was some potential coming into this year. You guys won a school record uh, last year, 18 games. Uh, right. So I think coming into the season, you probably saw there was that potential for a successful season. Yeah. I think um, our team last year, we we did a good um, building block, and then we knew we were having great players come in this year. So, I mean, it could only go up from there. Now you came from the University of San Diego, correct? Correct. How did you find CSUMB and why? <laughs> um, out of high school, Coach Jay was recruiting me and to San Diego Menace. State. Coach, coach Menace right. was recruiting me to San Diego State. And um, the day before they were going to offer a scholarship to San Diego State, USD offered me a scholarship, and so I decided to go there. And then I went back to Missouri for a year. Oh, wow. And then um, I wanted to come home, back home to California and play in front of my family. So I hit up Coach Menace and... Um, asked her if she needed a guard. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously worked out. Julie, when this team started at 16-0, and 0, I wonder what was it like? Because I know when people go on runs, 10, 12 straight wins, all of a sudden you do that, maybe that incivil, incivil, I'll get it out here, incivility that you can, can't lose. Um, Is that the feeling there? I mean, it was definitely a great feeling. You know, you just go, we just look one game at a time. So, I mean, we look for the next game, and then pretty soon, you know, they're building up, like you said. And our, the conference we're in, I mean, it's it's hard to beat teams twice. So I, it was really amazing that we beat everybody the first time around. So once we hit that first time around, we knew it was going to be hard to, you know, beat the teams the next time around. But being that 16-0 and 0 and just sweeping the first round, it was definitely an amazing feeling. Yeah, at some point you're no longer sneaking up on anybody. Yeah. yeah. London Otters have only lost twice this year. You've started 17 of 21 games. I think there's seven players on this team averaging seven points or more a game. You don't have a star, but it sounds like you don't need one. Um, I'd agree. <laughs> I mean, we have so so much talent and so many great players on this team, you know. Any given night, it could be anyone's, you know, game or it could be everyone's game. Right, yeah, no doubt. Julie, you hate losing anyone to an injury, um, particularly a starter. You lost Eric Ward to an injury 15 games in the season. Yet the strength of this team, as you mentioned, has been its depth, and you guys haven't skipped a beat. Yeah, um, it was definitely a heartbreaker when she went down, but... Um, you know, the team we have this year, everybody just kind of, you know, we all pulled together and we all know how to just continue going. And we couldn't let that one injury, you know, stop us from the goal we had. And she's actually still a, a big part in our team. She's part of the coaching staff and she's done a great job in, you know, seeing the game during the games, during halftime, during our huddles. And she, she's really kind of like the inside player because she's in the locker room with right. us. But then again, she's also in the in the office with the coaches. So she's really... I mean, to me, she's still kind of like a secret weapon. You know, teams don't really have a player that can, you know, that had played the 15 games and right. knows what it's like out there and now has the coach's point of view. Coach on the court, kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lennon, you're shooting a team high 82% from the free throw line. I know if the game's on the line, I want you on the line. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sat there in practice and made 50, 60 in a row? Um, after practice, I try to make 50 free throws. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Julie, defense obviously has been an emphasis in practice. At least I think it has been because you guys are one of the top-ranked teams in the NCAA Division II. Uh, you guys just kind of clamp down on opponents. Yeah, we. Um, that's definitely the thing that we we practice every day. That's I mean, we do defense every single day, and it's not really about um, who who scores on our team. Like, yeah, we have you know the seven people that are averaging you know at least seven points, but to us, we feel like we can score. We can get buckets anytime. The thing is, you just have to hold the teams right. to not let them get their buckets, and then we'll end up coming out with the win. 
Julie, or excuse me, London, I know you guys don't like to look ahead, but have you at least glanced a little about the potential matchups in the Division II playoffs? Um, out there? In the beginning of the year, Coach did a little graph, you know, what we need to do to get to the very top. And um, so we know the other teams that are out there, and we know what we have to do because we kind of like to measure ourselves up to them sure. and, you know, what we need to do to get up to the top teams, you know? So. Um, but other than that, you know, we just take each game night by night. Well, it took a while. You got a national ranking right now. Are you guys kind of maybe the toast of campus? I mean, do, does the student body realize what's at stake this week in terms of uh, playing for a title Thursday and Friday? Um, I know definitely the uh, you know the athletic department, the the teachers, you know, the whole the whole university. You know, the president of our university comes to every game. Nice. So I mean, the the faculty knows what what's at stake. Um, the student athletes know what's at stake. We have a big thing where all the student athletes, you know, come and support each other each game. So there will definitely be a huge crowd. And with the student athletes, you know, everyone knows everyone. It's such a small school. So I think I think the school knows and all the students know what what a big deal it is these two games this week. What a way to have your senior year, huh? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna let, come back one more segment with these